Hi, I'm the Beauty Professor, and you can find my beauty blog at www.beautyprofessor.net. Today I'll be doing a tutorial on how to properly get ready for a job interview in terms of makeup application. Now, I'm also a professor of communication in addition to talking about and writing about makeup on a regular basis, and in this case, I spend a great deal of time helping my students and also my clients. I do consulting on the side helping them to adequately prepare for the job interview experience and part of that for makeup wearers is what kind of makeup should I choose to apply for that really important meeting so this tutorial will cover the specifics of that and I will be introducing some makeup items that I love and often recommend for this very purpose it is true that this job market is excruciatingly competitive right now and so performing well certainly from a communication standpoint is essential but also in terms of how one presents themselves face to face in the interview first impressions are an essential part of the interpersonal experience and research even alarmingly shows that people make up their minds about you whether this is right or wrong and it's probably wrong but it still is true nonetheless people make up their minds about you within the first few seconds of interaction so while we can't completely control that experience we can do our best to positively contribute to our overall self-presentation and I am a firm believer, especially for a female in a job interview, that you want to be the most polished, the best version, if you will, of yourself. So you want to go in looking like yourself, but looking like a polished version, and that might require some cosmetics. So let's get to what cosmetics I would suggest to get ready for this ever important interview. The first thing you'll want to start with is base or foundation, and certainly it needs to look natural, but your canvas, which is what your face is, needs to look as even as possible. I'm going to be working with the Bobbi Brown Long Wear Even Finish Compact, in beige today and I'll be doing a proper blog review of this foundation you know I am a foundation fiend and so this is one that I picked up a while ago a week ago or so and I've been enjoying experimenting with it it is a cream formula and this is nice because it creates a rather skin like finish that's believable but because it's long wearing it's great for a situation where you might feel stressed and your body temperature rises because of that stress and so you want to make sure if you're feeling any kind of heat in your body that your foundation's not melting off and i've given this some serious trial over the last week in a hot classroom and have found that it withstands the warmth very well just pulled my hair back into a loose ponytail as to not create dents it does have some curl from earlier today which we can work with for the overall presentation prior to the job interview. And I'm going to take my beauty blender here, which also requires a proper review. I am so impressed by this tool that I know has been around for a while, but I'm just a little late to the game on this. Wow, it cleans so much better than a brush does, and I really like the finish it gives with foundation. I'm gonna take this Evian Mister, which can be picked up in these perfect travel size bottles. I picked up mine at Nordstrom, and I'm going to just lightly spray the beauty blender here. Just giving it a little moisture and I find that that works nicely with this foundation. The combination of the moisture and the cream foundation and the application gives a very skin-like finish. I'm going to just dab here and then I'm going to go ahead and dab across my face. The goal is to have an even canvas, one that looks polished and clean and even but does not look cakey or overdone. You want that interviewer to see you, not your makeup. And certainly that might be a goal for everyday life. I know it is for me even being a makeup lover. But the goal would be to just even everything out so you have a very polished countenance. So I'm just dabbing and I just touch this in but I cannot believe how much product this little blender holds onto when you work this way. All right, you can see coverage is nice. It's what I would deem medium coverage, and as I've already mentioned, it's got a great skin-like finish. Now in terms of concealer, and I typically like to apply my concealer 
after I've put on foundation because I find you get to use a lot less and that's great. I'm going to be using this concealer I've been trying lately. It's the Kat Von D Lock It Tattoo Concealer. Certainly this is not a new product on the market, but I do find that it works really nicely to brighten up the under eye area and then stay there. I'm working with long wearing products today because of that job interview scenario. You might be driving to get there, waiting a while. Certainly the pressure is on, so your body temperature is running, running more warmly. And so you want products that will last. You don't want anything too high maintenance or effete for the moment. First things first, I have some Laura Mercier Secret Camouflage Concealer in SC3. Both colors blended on the tip of this retractable, retractable lip brush. And I'm going to just go ahead and touch up any blemishes I might have that I want a little coverage for. I've got a little something there and there. Lovely. And if there's any dark spots across the face, you can just brighten up. I'm not going to use this under my eyes because I find that the coverage is just not smooth enough for my preference, but it's great to cover up a dark spot or a blemish. I have used this for over a decade and absolutely adore it. It's not an exciting product, but it is an effective one. On to the under eyes. I will go ahead and just take the tiniest. This is very concentrated. I'm wearing medium number 22, and I'm using the tiniest little dab there, as you can see. I'm gonna use the top of my hand to blot it out and then use my ring finger to just apply in the under eye region to brighten things up a little bit. Clear up any darkness that you might have. It's a very opaque concealer and once you set it, has a chance to set, it does not bud. Next up will be a little contour and bronzer. Now I, today I'm working with a brand new acquisition which I suspect is going to take me through the sp late spring and summer with Finesse. It's the Guerlain Terracotta Four Seasons in Double Zero Nude, which was very hard to find. I picked mine up at Bloomingdale's recently. They just received a shipment because it's been sold out online for since its release. It's got three pale beige tones that have a bronzer-esque feel as well as one pale pink. I like that because I tend to apply cheek product with an accidentally heavy hand and certainly you don't want to come in with these racing stripes on your face for a job interview. That is ill-advised. So I'm going to take my retractable blush brush here that I picked up at Sephora. Just get a little bit of each of the colors. I always do a dab on my hand to reduce some of that fallout and then I'm just going to suck in my cheeks and apply with a dotted motion. Now because this is so light it's not giving a super dark contour and that's best. This is not time for fierce dramatic makeup especially if you're going for a very professional job position and then I might take a little more just of the pink here with the same brush and apply to the apples of my cheeks for a glow. I find the apples by smiling myself. Oh, this is so fun. Next up are the eyes and I prefer a very simple polished eye in a job interview situation. This is not the time for drama. I'm going to use the By Terry Color Fix Cream Eyeshadow. It's Ombre Black Star in number four, which is Bronze Moon, I've talked about this product before. I love it for its neutrality and its long wearing finish. And now I'll just apply to my lid like this. Oops. Cross my entire lid. I'm doing a single wash of color. You can see the difference right now. Lid, nothing. And it just gives a nice light glow. It's not glittery. I would just call it a very subtle, sophisticated shimmer. And it, I don't even need a brush. I just apply straight from the tube here. Just blend it in. I'm not going to go past my crease on this because I don't want anything going up to the brows. I might take just a tiny swipe very close to my lower lash line here. Same product just to add a little dimension, but nothing overt. Next come, comes brows, and I'll be working with the Hourglass Arch Brow Sculptor, and this is in Soft Brunette, which is a very ashy brown, light brown, and I'm just going to go ahead and 
go over my brush line. This pencil, I'm gonna show you right now, if I can. Even with a fairly hard swipe, it doesn't impart a ton of color. I like that because you don't wanna come in with these intense Joan Crawford brows where that's all anyone sees. I know the strong brow is in, but we want to use restraint here so that it flatters the face. So I've just traced my brow line. It's clinging to the hair but and it's enhancing shape but it's not making things groucho marx-esque and that's a good thing and that's all i'm going to do to my brows very basic very careful next is mascara and i do believe that some mascara typically looks good on any woman so it's just about being natural yet polished and so i'm going to work with the guerlain lay 2 mascara it's lengthening lengthening and volumizing but I, it doesn't have an inordinate amount of little pieces to make your eyelashes look clumpy and heavy. I have a little bit on from earlier today that I did not bother removing before this video, but I'm going to just go ahead and add a little more so you can see its effect. Just gonna go on the top lashes. Should have a nice eye opening effect. And this mascara is light, so if you have not super strong lashes, you'll find that it gives length and volume without weighing the lashes down. Slight bit at the bottom, but not a lot. You can already see the defining principle there. A little bit on this side. I also like that this particular mascara brush and formula allows me to add a little more throughout the day. So if I needed to do a quick touch up as I'm doing now, I can do that without it getting inordinately clumpy. Next comes a little bit of highlighter to catch the light on the face. And I'm going to put a tiny bit of this Rouge Bunny Rouge Fine Spun Light in Orianas. It's the Luminous Skin Wand. I'm just going to touch a little bit across here. Not a lot. It's got such a cooling effect. It feels amazing. A little bit here. But what I like about this, and I've spoken about this product before, is that, as you can see here, it's not a super sparkly product. It's not glimmery. It's not even shimmery. It might have the tiniest bit of shimmer, but it's imperceptible to the naked eye. And I'm just gonna dab it in with my finger. It gives a lightening and brightening effect without creating that shimmer that could maybe translate as too playful or juvenile for a serious job interview. So there it is, just a little bit of brightness across the brow bone, the nose, and the upper cheeks. As we near the end of this preparation, obviously one of the remaining steps would be lips. Now in this case, and I always advise my clients and my students to go with a very polished, neutral lip. Now I love nude lipsticks, and so a pale lip like Tom Ford Nude Vanilla might achieve is gorgeous, but I don't think it's job interview appropriate. It's too pale, which then makes the eye look at the lip and go, wow, that's a pale lip, pretty or otherwise. You don't want to be calling attention to your lips in an unnecessary fashion. I'm going to go ahead and prime my lips with some La Prairie Lip Enhancer. Now, this is a rather nude product, and by itself, I wouldn't recommend it for a job interview. It's not meant to be a lip color. It just fills in the lip line, primes your lips for what's to come next. In this case, I'm going to be using a newly released gloss. It's the Armani Flash Gloss, Flash Lacquer in number 107. I just picked this up and it does require a proper blog post and review because it's amazing. This whole formula line is just superb. This 107 color is a creamy, semi-opaque, nude pink, but it's dark enough to create a flushed lip that's not flashy or distracting. Very natural and polished. And for some, we'll get really close. For some, they might wonder, are you even wearing a lip color? Is this just a clear gloss? It's very shiny, but it's definitely not harlot-like. And it just enhances the natural coloring in one's face. I see this being a great color for many skin tones in the light to medium skin range. You might want to step it up depth-wise if you have slightly darker skin. But overall, even this with a dark liner works nicely. I think this is one of the most versatile 
utilitarian colors out there. It's number 107. I got the last one at Bloomingdale's yesterday and certainly I've tried to replicate glosses like this in the past. Laura Mercier Baby Lips Gloss, which they no longer make, was a very similar color. I was sad when it was discontinued. And this is a great dupe for that in the modern age. And this is essentially the finished face for the job interview. I'll get close to the camera so you can see the final product. If you feel like you're a little too glowy for your own preference, you might want to touch up with a tiny bit of medium coverage powder. I just am using the Serge Lutens Tent Cephine. This is a very pricey powder option, but certainly any powder that you're already comfortable using would work. I like to use a pad in this case, sponge applicator, and just go across my T-zone to take care of any unwanted shine. Across the nose, a little bit in here. I'm not a big fan of powdering the cheeks if I can help it because I think that takes away some of the natural glow and it can also look chalky. So that's it. And to close, in terms of what to do with the hair, now I have lots of hair and it's long. I tend to like a little bit of curl. I've done a curler tutorial with the Callista Hot Rollers already. It's on my YouTube channel. In this case, this is left over from many hours earlier today. And this, even if I ran a brush through it, would probably be polished enough for my comfort zone. I would make sure, I like to wear my hair down most of the time, and for those who do, I don't see anything wrong with that for a job interview, as long as you can resist touching your hair, which can come across as immature or self-involved and you don't want that in a job interview. So I tend to just lightly tuck mine and then make a mental note to myself not to touch it again. And in terms of clothing, and there's a litany of instruction in that regard, but I almost always opt, unless it's a super dressy interview, for a very comfortable yet tailored button-down shirt. You can wear it with pants, slacks, a skirt, and it just looks professional, but not like you're trying too hard. So I put this on in honor of the spirit of this tutorial. I truly hope that you found this makeup for the job interview tutorial useful. And I would love to hear your questions and comments about maybe what works for you in job interview situations. As always, please don't hesitate to visit me at my blog, Beauty Professor, which can be found at www dot beautyprofessor dot net. Take care.